despite what we're seeing in the headlines in the moment, for many, electric cars still make sense. For those who have regular schedules, easy access to charging, and they may not need to use public networks as frequently. There is the simplicity of the EV, the ease of driving in congested cities, and reduced servicing costs in some cases. There are many that EV life suits. And for those of you who are in the market for a fun, dynamic, and technically clever family EV, we have the Scenic E-Tech. Inside Renault's all-new Scenic is the user-friendly and intuitive technology, which is something that other manufacturers need to study. Now, before we talk about the Google OS, it's not the same as the OS supplied in the Polestar OS, which has its own interface and operational issues. Renault's open or digital cockpit layout is very good indeed. The 12 inch central touchscreen is big and easy to read and access the features through. It can use Google SatNav and Google Maps to plan a route based on available charging spots too. And there's a preconditioning feature for the battery which helps the range accuracy in cold or hot climates. It also assists charging the battery so that the optimal temperature for a faster charging experience can be gained. Renault has brought on board musician Jean-Michel Jarre to develop some sounds for the Scenic. The first being a VSP, Vehicle Sound for Pedestrians, and this warns people when the car is approaching at walking speed. And another sound, when you enter the cabin you get a lovely aerial welcome through the 9-speaker Harman Kardon sound system, which is standard on the highest spec iconic trim. The trim also adds a digital rear view mirror with a feed from a camera placed on the rear of the roof. The image quality on the screen is mostly decent with just a little grain and you also get the solar bay panoramic sunroof which has an interesting blind function embedded in the glass. The overall layout of the scenic cabin is modern and easy to make your way around. The materials feel high quality in the right places and are mostly sustainable especially now with the deletion of leather as an option. Most of the system settings are found within the main touchscreen, with climate controls and heated seat functions accessible via external switches. For the panoramic roof, you can adjust the shade between front and rear passengers via the button beside the rear view mirror or voice command. This is the larger 87 kWh long range battery, which can charge at up to 150 kW with a 10 to 80% top up possible in 40 minutes. Using an 11 kilowatt charger, it takes around nine hours for a zero to 100% top up. With 217 brake horsepower total, it achieves a zero to 100 km hour time of 7.9 seconds, but it weighs almost 100 kilograms more than the smaller battery version. A full charge gets around 600 kilometers on the WLTP cycle, and with the addition of a standard fit heat pump, it should be more efficient during colder weather, but we've only tested during the warm, if wet, summer temperatures. You should also consider if you need the extra range versus the added cost and weight. The boot has around 545 litres of space with up to 1,670 litres with the rear bench folded. Bar the fact that there's no extra space under the bonnet, there's a plenty of road trip friendly cubbies throughout the cabin including a large 6.6 .6 litre area in the centre console and an extra 38 litres in total throughout. There's plenty of head and knee room but unfortunately there's no sliding or reclining rear bench for added comfort. There's a bit of a boot lip to contend with making loading large objects more awkward but using a height adjustable boot floor allows handy storage for the charging cables. The market might be in a dip and will probably normalise given some time, but this is absolutely one of the electric cars that you should be looking at.